uh, recording. All right. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm here with Sam Metla, uh, aka Chasm. He runs uh, EDM product or EDMprod.com, uh, EDMprod.com. So, uh, tell us about what uh, EDM Prod is all about. Um, yeah, it started off as sort of a side project uh, in 2013. So, you know, I was, I was running a blog about like productivity and time management, which isn't the most interesting thing, uh, especially if you're a music producer. Um, and I sat down one day and thought, you know, this is, there's no future in this. Uh, I want to, you know, commit to music uh, full time and write a blog on the side because I've always been interested in teaching like you. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that and then it sort of became the non-side project. So music production became a side project and I was teaching and writing these articles, you know, every day. Uh, and it eventually sort of went down the workflow and creativity path because uh, not many people were, you know, talking about that. And I think it's fundamentally important. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, it has slowed down a bit because of my work with Freshly Squeeze Samples, but, you know, it's still alive. Still got plans with it. Um, but, yeah, it is still quite, uh, you know, young, I suppose. It's about a year old. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Pretty much it. So uh, that's about it. Um, tell us, this is really interesting because I struggle um, with productivity and time management. Do you have any like advice uh, for achieving like maximum productivity? So say if like you wake up nine in the morning and you go to sleep nine at night, ideally or whatever, you have a 12 hour day or an eight hour day. Right. Yeah. Like how do you get the most out of it? I think uh, part of it has to do with habit. You know, like you can't, you can't just be productive and get things done purely from willpower because willpower is, it's limited. And you find that in music production as well. If you're, if you're trying to like blast through the last 10% of a track, it's often quite difficult because it's hard. And if you're trying to do it at say, this doesn't apply to everyone, but a lot of people, if, if they work a full-time job and they get home and try to produce, uh, they find it difficult because they've used up a lot of willpower during the day. Um, so it comes down to habit and just being consistent. So I would say, like, yeah, get in a routine, exactly. Um, so, for example, I have a, a rule, especially now that I do quite a lot of, you know, educational work to actually produce for at least one hour per day. Um, and that doesn't seem like much, but it just keeps the... I don't know, like the creativity flowing over the week and you get stuff done. And I've also found that when you limit yourself to, say, an hour or schedule out an hour of time, you actually get a lot done because you're not going to muck around and, you know, be waste time, I suppose, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, that does make sense. Um, but, yeah, I mean, time management is such a big topic. There's no one way to do it, I suppose. There's no, like, one blanket rule that will apply to everyone um some people find it valuable to schedule out their whole day uh, uh, others don't i can't do because things come up you know during the day and you can't you have to deal with them um but for people who do struggle with productivity and time management i'd recommend a book called getting things done by david allen I'll write that down that's really uh, really helpful Cool. Uh, any other books you'd recommend while we're while we're at it for that sort of thing, or is that just like the main the main one? Um, it's sort of the main one, but you know there are. I mean, it depends how deep you want to go. I'm not gonna recommend um, medical journals and stuff, but there's there's one called Willpower, uh, and that talks about from a scientific perspective what willpower is and how it's used. Uh, and what else is there? That's about it, really. Yeah. I mean, there are loads of books out there, but so it's one of those things you have to practice, you know? Yeah. Like for me, um, 
I'm having like a lot of I had like a difficult time like maintaining like energy throughout the day, and like um, mm-hmm. like uh, like I'll have to take a nap every day, and I'm trying not to do that, and I'm training my body. It's like even if I have to stay up all night, I have to stay awake for like a set period of time to get my body used to doing that. So that really made yeah. a, a lot of sense with uh, like a routine you're talking about. Um, so you, you're like big in, uh, into like not self help because that kind of has a negative connotation. You're big into yeah, like. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Not self help. What's the word? You've been to like body hacks? Not body hacks. I don't know. Personal development? Yes, personal like development. Yes. Yeah. No, definitely. I think it's, I think it's pretty important. You know, just trying to be better, do better, um, and you can see so many parallels. Like knowing about time management, applying it to music, and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it's a topic I'm interested in. Yeah, I was gonna say though, uh, like if you're having naps, I don't think that's a, necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, unless you're like four hours long. <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty bad. Wake up. Yeah, yeah, and then maybe five hours. Oh, oh okay. yeah, it's not good. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's, it's like a twenty a twenty minute nap has you know has been proven to be quite helpful. Yeah, so it doesn't like achieve um, full REM or it just goes into theta. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think you need ninety minutes for that. Nice. And do you do you do that or no? Uh sometimes. Like at the moment, I it's a pretty like uh standard routine like i'll go to sleep at 10 wake up in the morning and i find like if i can produce in the morning you know i'm i enjoy it a lot more um because you haven't got as much stuff running through your head and you're a lot more focused Mm -hmm. and that kind of thing but i know that doesn't apply to everyone because i know people who can't make music in the morning like they just can't they have to do it you know at early hours in the morning and it's like ah too tired i'm too tired at that time i can't do that there's no way yeah you know just play around with the synth for four hours and achieve nothing yeah that's this is basically what i've been doing since i got serum so yeah (laughs) well yeah but that's yeah that's an exception yeah i've been getting some cool sounds where like i'm just like i have no idea where to put this it's kind of kind of weird do you take any uh like supplements or enhancements um, like tea, even tea or like... Yeah, I, I take green tea. I haven't had it much recently, but I drink green tea, uh, coffee, of course. Oh. Like that's an essential part of my diet. Yeah. Uh, and other than that, just multivitamin. Um, I don't know how much it helps, but I find like when I'm not having that kind of stuff, you know, I do feel a little bit more... Uh, tired, I suppose, yeah. or less energetic, or less focused. Yeah. But I know I remember watching a video that you filmed talking about supplements. Um, yeah, it was a. I can't remember what what you mentioned. It was a, a th- theanine. It's a green tea extract. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the uh, than uh, the tannins. No, than theanine. Or I don't know. It's one of the uh, 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 fl- fl- flavonoids i think they're called and it's the one that uh, okay. uh opens your blood vessels and like wakes you up that's what tea does as opposed to right. caffeine yeah. which kind of makes you crash um, mm, yeah it does it does yeah so you drink a lot of coffee when you write like uh when you sit down you want to write an article uh how would uh, that process go about um get an idea so and just go, yeah. yeah 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 so i normally start you know, I've got a whole list of ideas. Uh, some of them th- will never be blog posts. Like they're too, they're too complicated, as in they have to be like a sixty-page ebook, or they're way too simple and they can be explained in two sentences. But the ones that are decent ideas, um, I will sit down and normally in the morning and start by brainstorming. Uh, and I do that with music too. Like each song, each song I start just. Go on a site like uh, coggle.it, which I'll type in. Nice. And no, oh, I got to sign up. Oh. <laughs> I will connect with Facebook. Hang on. Um, yeah. So brainstorm and just get ideas all together linked up. 
because um, I often find that you, you come, a, you know, I come up with a lot more ideas that I wouldn't have thought about if I had just started, you know, writing straight away. Uh, so I do that and then pretty much draft it, write as fast as possible, uh, and then edit ruthlessly later on. Uh, and that's it. the approach I take to music as well, for the most part, not always, but getting the you know the rough layout done um, and the ideas formed, and then you know really digging in and, and making the changes and adjustments, and making sure that it sounds you know sonically uh, tight, I suppose. Nice. Uh, did you do? Do you have any like post secondary uh, like for your writing? Did you take like a writing class or like a music class? No, no. I nah. I I just I watch a lot of YouTube videos, read a lot of books. Um, I mean, I wouldn't call myself the best writer by any means. I've still got a lot to learn. Um, but yeah, for the most part, self taught. I think I took a course uh, or two on on writing, but. Um, you know, it really comes down to practice. Yeah. So I, I would like to do something like that one day, uh, maybe. Nice. I think you got a question. Do you think of melody themes? I guess we're into production questions now. <laughs> yeah. I'm not too sure what you mean by that. Do you think of melody themes? Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, the work you do with uh, Freshly Squeezed Samples, which is a pretty cool uh, sample company. I've heard of them like a lot. What do they have? Are you, are you doing like marketing for them or are you just... Uh... Yeah, a bit of marketing. Um, like we've got a blog that hasn't been launched yet, but I've pretty much done everything for that. And uh, I did, you know, I read the product descriptions and all that kind of stuff um, when I came on board. But you know we've got a lot in the works. I can't mention. Yeah, of course. Much, of it, but <laughs> but yeah, at the moment it's mostly pointing to get a content. And if you look on the Facebook page uh, for Freshly Squeezed Samples, there's a lot of daily tips. Yeah. So we post a daily tip each day, which I do as well. And I used to do it with EDM Prod, but that was part of the the deal moving over. So oh, it's fair enough. I mean, I I don't mind that because. Um, the freshly squeeze page is a lot bigger mm -hmm. and you know the ultimate goal is to educate um so if i can reach more people via that page then i'm totally cool with it yeah they have a lot of a lot of products i'm just looking at them right now yeah yeah it's been around for a few years yeah who who runs it like the uh is it just a, a bunch of guys or a one guy no nah, it's just one guy um it's crazy which surprised me like he built it from scratch. Wow. Like, obviously, the products are often built in collaboration with artists such as the Sunny Lex, um, sound sets and all that. Yeah. Um, but, yes, yeah, pretty amazing, I have to admit. Yeah. Well, I'd love to get a hold of some of these like we talked about. Yeah, I'll definitely get onto that. Okay. Um, just send me, send me what you want and we'll get that sorted. For sure. All right. Oh, I just got distracted. Um, um, so how did you get starting? Uh, how did you get started producing? Um, hmm, that's always a tough question. I I was playing drums and guitar since probably the age of ten, and I think I was listening to Bass Hunter uh, one day. Like, Bass Hunter was the thing, you know. Um, among the, the young kids, I suppose, and everyone. So I was listening to Bass Hunter and I was like, you know, this music's kind of cool. And then I proceeded to download a torrent, a uh, Top 100 Trance and Techno compilation. Oh, yeah. Uh, and they had all the old stuff like Alice DJ, you know, old ATB. Mm -hmm. And I loved that as well. And then I just, I don't know what made me do it, but I searched you know, how to make electronic music, um, ended up downloading like a tracker and it just completely confused the shit out of me. Like, yeah, what, I still don't understand those things. <laughs> what year was it? Was and, this? Oh, 2000. Well, it must have been something. 2008 maybe. Oh yeah. Um, 
I forgot what it was called, the tracker, but, you know, I gave up on the tracker because it didn't make sense to me. And then um, That's downloaded so FL Studio. If we, yeah. Yeah. If we like elaborate, like you looked up how to make electronic music and you went, you ended up going to a tracker. I know it was, it was one of the first links that came up and it recommended a tracker. So I was like, okay, well this must be how you make music. Um, and there was just no, there's no information on it, no tutorials or anything. Yeah. Uh, and so if our studio it was, and then eventually I moved to Ableton. Um, I still love if, if our studio, but I don't know. Ableton's just another step higher for me. It is. Okay. Um, so, uh, you got started, uh, producing, what kind of music did you start producing? Or like, did your like taste change as you like developed as a music or, uh, uh a producer? Mm. Uh, somewhat. I mean, I started off producing that bass hunter style. I, I don't know what you call it. Maybe Euro dance or hands up or something. Hands up, something like that. Um, and then I moved to dubstep. Funnily enough, I love dubstep. When I mean dubstep, I don't mean like song boy, um, knife party kind of stuff like screaming binger, mm -hmm. um, without sounding too elitist, the proper stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then moved to, uh, commercial progressive house and then trance and I've stayed with trance ever since but I, I don't like if I want to produce a techno track I will I love techno as well it's, it's one of those things where it's like if I had enough time I'd probably create an, a secondary alias just to make techno mm -hmm. techno sure is fun I make it all the time well I started out as a techno yeah, yeah I love your I love the chance thank you uh, yeah I asked like because like as I developed as a producer guy, well, I'm still developing. But as I developed, I totally like switch styles. When I got to a certain point, right? Like I felt kind of limited. Um, going from I went from hard techno to like you know slower mm -hmm. BPM techno, just because mm -hmm. it was just kind of formulaic and there wasn't a whole lot of freedom. And yeah, just because yeah, I wanted to ask that question because I I find that as a uh, it's a theme that happens a lot. Um, yeah, no, I do agree. Do you think? I've got a question for you, Yo. and I like asking yeah, this. Um, do you think that like dabbling in different genres helps you improve uh, more exponentially as a producer? Yeah, I think so. So, because I think of it like like the bass music, dubstep, drum and bass. You know, it's heavily focused on sound design, um, whereas something like trance is very melody and orientated yeah you know and it relies more on songwriting and so on so i'm thinking you know from a learning perspective not necessarily releasing different genres but producing them and understanding them helps you um overall like helps you develop skills i suppose if that makes sense but some people disagree with me that's that's why i asked it does like um like i've I, I like had no idea. Well, I still don't have any idea how to make like a dubstep bass like a year ago. No yeah. idea. But like I kind of wanted to get into it mainly mm. to like become a better producer guy. Um, mm -hmm. And then I discovered a uh, seamless woman to try to get on here as well. Uh, and additive synthesis and like a whole new world that I would never like go to. Like I have mm. a fetish for digital synths like subtract as yeah. you, like around me. I love like the old digital sense and they can't do that crazy FM additive stuff. And I was just like kind of in my own little world. So you kind of like box yourself in if you like stick to one, like one little thing and you don't kind of branch out. Right. And like, it's not like saying, uh, you know, insert main room guy. He adds like a dubstep breakdown to his thing. No, I'm talking about like, exploring like different kind of avenues like my album i don't know if you heard it yet but um i have, I have. yeah there's progressive rock in that album and yeah, like uh yeah. acoustic instruments and i really just want to like branch out there's some techno mm. too but uh yeah I, I really wanted to like kind of do different things while keeping it kind of interesting but yeah oh absolutely that's how that's how music moves forward yeah. you know at the end of the day like personally like uh, as like a producer you should be 
like trying to do different things like i'm trying to like mm -hmm. you know score something one day or make mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff like i have like a stack of books beside me and i'm trying to learn music theory finally because i have <laughs> nothing but time and i'm just trying to like i need to, yeah. I, I need to know what i'm doing like this is like one of the major puzzles i got to figure out in my life and you know yeah yeah i'm halfway there i gotta figure i have you know stuff and what's holding me back totally. is my ability to play a melody can't play any mm. anything to save my life <laughs> um so yeah that brings me to your youtube channel do you still post on your youtube channel i'm subscribed to you but i don't really see you posting that much uh yeah part of the reason for that is because I'm doing most of the videos on Freshy Squeeze. So if I come up with a video idea, it's most likely going on the uh, Freshy Squeeze channel. Mm. Um, but the, unfortunately, the EDM Pro YouTube channel has never really been that active. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's always been a written content site. But I mean, I've got video ideas that I'd love to, not necessarily courses, but multi part videos that I'd love to do. Um, but yeah, it's not something I actively promote the YouTube channel just because of the lack of content on there. Yeah. <laughs> lack of quality content. I mean, some of those videos I I don't really like. Uh, so, so some of your own videos you don't like? Yeah. You know. You, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm just like you, when you get yeah. when you improve and you get better and you realize how many mistakes you've made. It's yeah. It's a bit cringy, but. Yeah, I look. I, yeah, I watch back to my old videos. I'm just like hunched over, and I'm just like I'm <laughs> like so, like egotistical, and I'm like, this is how I do yeah. it, and this is how it's done. <laughs> I'm just like, that sounds like ass. And this was only like a year and a half ago, right? So exactly, yeah, yeah, and like I, I know I'm gonna look back a year from now and be like, what was I thinking? Like a year, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. That's what it's all about, though. Yeah. I have to, like yeah my goal is to like do lots of videos and educate and have cool people on the streams and I'll have fun I think stuff. you're already doing that man yeah for sure <laughs> um, YouTube channel so no more okay so uh, freshly squeezed samples I believe you can just go on their website and is there a link to it the YouTube channel there might not be actually that's something you gotta fix oh because you're gonna um, launch the the thing the the blog right yeah yeah okay yeah it's not it's not live yet okay people, i'll post a link in the uh yeah people can subscribe to that chat box okay yeah nice um yeah, I'm just on the Facebook page now. I didn't know you were writing for them. I'm I like them. Yeah, I didn't know you were yeah. writing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh so Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. I've always been a fan of the the company, so Yeah. It was um I'm quite grateful for it, for yeah. the job to be honest. Yeah, we all it's like all all of us like I think we're all in like the same kind of uh graduating class of educators you know like <laughs> yourself seamless myself maybe and like uh oh, artifacts definitely. and like all these other guys we all have like we all like kind of started up at the same time and we all have like our companies that we gravitate towards now that, that we're trying to help out yeah yeah like for me it's you know bitwig and you know yeah i find that really interesting yeah, that's, that's true man and it's kind of interesting how the, the genres differ as well like I know you're a big techno guy, even though you're not, you know, your videos are, how do I put it? They're not necessarily genre specific. Yeah. Um, whereas Seamless is like, you know, heavy on the bass music. So I think Artifex is too, um, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Glitch Hop, I believe. Glitch Hop, right. And I, I'll use a trance example for anything I'm trying to explain. Yeah. Like that's the first, first thing I'm going to do. Um, mm. Okay. Um, so, how long have you been using Ableton for? Since what version? Uh, it must have been seven, but I kept switching back and forth between FL Studio. Yeah. Like, you know, I'd spend six months with Ableton, switch back to FL Studio, and then switch back. 
and I don't know. I don't know why I did that, but it's kind of cool because I, I know both of them quite well. Um, so if I if someone comes around to my house and they want to learn production, it's like, you know, if you want to use FL Studio, you can use that. Um, it's easier to explain things, I suppose. But that being said, I would love to check out Bitwig. Yes. And also also Cubase. Like, I've heard a lot of good things about Cubase, but it seems like it's almost a bit overkill. Um, yeah. Cubase is, uh, it's been around probably the longest and it's like the most stable mm. out of right, all of them. Yeah. Do you use it much? I've, I've only used it once. It's just, I, okay. I see it more in that kind of camp of uh, like uh, Pro Tools, like for recording like a band. I see it in like that kind of camp. Not so much for like electronic music. Yeah, totally. And, and film scoring and, and stuff like yeah. that. Like heavy, heavy uh, professional recording. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So, um, so you're an Ableton guy for sure. Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's just, it, it feels so natural and intuitive. Like, yeah. I love how everything works. Um, for sure. I'd like to try out Logic too. I, I recently switched to Mac, so yeah. it's been something I, I wanted to try out. But again, it's like, how much time do you commit to that? Because it's not like it's going to make your music any better. It's just something you do out of curiosity. Yeah. Uh, and teaching, of course. Yeah. I remember back in the day, there was just like, if you wanted to make anything that was good, you needed to use uh, Logic. You had to get a Mac. You had to, you know, were you kind of in that school of thought? Because I was. Uh, yeah, for a bit, but I couldn't afford one. So yeah. I just completely didn't. I didn't bother at all. Yeah. Uh, and then, I don't know, recently I, you know, my laptop broke and I was like, I need to get a new one. And I sort of found, at least in New Zealand anyway, like to get a decent spec laptop, um, it'll cost almost two grand. And I mean, the MacBook I bought was about two and a half, so it was it wasn't a big stretch to pay what most people consider overpriced. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm really liking it so far. I used to be like against Macs, like against Apple, just yeah. rebellious teenager. Um, but I have to admit, I'm really liking it. Yeah. Which uh, is it like the new the, the Mac Pro? I think they're all Mac yeah, Pros the, now. Yeah, the Retina version. Um, it's a MacBook Pro. Nice. Uh, that's not too bad. Like there are a few wi Wi-Fi issues. Yeah. Um, which I've heard is quite common, but other than that, I'm loving it. Yeah. So I like I like to ask this. I'm like, for anyone who uses Ableton, because like I have a, quite a few gripes with Ableton. What do you think, and what yeah. do you want, and what do you expect in the tenth version of Ableton? Because it's going to be here in Ooh. one to two years. See, I, I have all these things that um, I come up with when I'm producing, but now that you ask me the question, it's like, oh, I cannot remember them. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think they need to really step their game up. Because How so? there wasn't there wasn't much of an improvement from uh, 8 to 9. Mm. Uh, there was the cool... Uh, 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 audio to MIDI, uh, harmony, uh, and yeah, drum, yeah. which doesn't work too badly. Yeah, it actually works pretty well. Um, and there's the the plug and delay compensation, and like uh, some sort of there's just it's just kind of like that's not yeah that's not quite there yet the compensation. Yeah, they do need to work on that. Bitwig is like um, spot on. It was crazy. Is it? Yeah, it's like almost sample accurate. It's intense. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know because with Bitwig out and uh, like the global modulation and uh, <coughs> the uh, the under the hood modular system, I'm kind of thinking Ableton needs to figure something out or make something new. Right? Yeah. Like how does how does that work? Like, forgive me for sounding ignorant, but the modular system, like. Uh, I haven't played with Bitwig at all. So. Oh yeah. So basically, if you can see my screen, um, I can. There might it might be it might be a little delayed. So say if you want to like add an LFO, I'll just I'll turn this down, uh, and you can modulate that, right? So you can modulate yeah. that. 
you only have four LFO. So say if you wanted to add another LFO, you can add that via the plugin, LFO mod, bam. And then you can kind of drag that in here. And then it kind of modulates it via automation, pseudo automation. Okay. And uh, so you select the filter cutoff, kind of like in Ableton. Mm -hmm. Drag the LFO over here. And then like the LFO is affecting this. So essentially you don't need as many LFOs, you have like unlimited LFOs affecting multiple things at once. Oh, wow. Like the reverb as well. Yeah. yeah. If you can see that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it is, it is lagging a bit. But yeah, it does. Yeah. I understand what you mean. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> in version two, you can uh, right click these, you know, max for live, right? Yeah. Yeah. So right now, every single plugin. Uh, in Bitwig is made with this like Max for Live type environment, and in version two you can oh, like what? click a wrench and then it opens it up in like an editor, and you can drag stuff around like in uh, what's that thing? Uh, it looks just like Native Instruments has it. Reactor, it's like built-in mm -hmm. Reactor everything, and you can like share ensembles and stuff. But yeah, that's just me being a, that is, a Bitwig that is so cool. a Bitwig fanboy. <laughs> yeah oh and rightly so it sounds awesome mm -hmm. yeah but it's, it's yeah it's not perfect it's really kind of quirky the ui yeah so yeah. so what like, what gripes do you have with uh bitwig at the moment then? uh bitwig um dragging audio from the browser you can't do that uh oh, okay. the browser to like a plugin like a drum machine or a sampler like nerve mm. and uh they fixed uh saving which is good like you don't have to actually like it'll automatically select the whole track when you save. And okay. Yeah, there's a, there's just a few other things when you copy a sidechain. Like, you know, if you copy something that's sidechain in Ableton and you copy the uh, compressor down, it'll remember the source. In Bitwig, it doesn't remember the source. It doesn't copy that. Oh, okay. So it's just kind of yeah, like yeah. quirky little things like that. But uh, mm -hmm. all in all, it's, uh, it's quite stable, which is good. Awesome. But yeah, that's me selling you bitwig <laughs> basically <laughs> uh, yeah i'll have to get it yeah so uh let's talk about serum how long have you had serum for do you get like the day it came out like me pretty much i think it might have been the day it came out or the day after i mean i was asleep when it actually launched uh, so I, I got it in the morning yeah and just pretty much spent the whole day with it um i really like it like i, I see it as uh I might get in trouble for saying this, but like the massive replacement. Yeah. In I massive. Yeah, people are saying that for sure. I'm just waiting for the day it's that just, someone uh, rips the massive wavetables that you can load. Someone's up. already done that. Uh, <laughs> really? So, uh, yeah, I, I run a uh, a group for ADM programmers and some guy posted. Oh, geez. I'll, I'll post a link in the chat. Oh, yeah. No. He, he ripped all the, he's a script to get all the files. The, plus the noise and um hang on oh, okay, well, you guys might not be able to access this actually that what i'll do is i'll upload it to dropbox while we're talking so nice. it's not that big but yeah exactly you know once you've got them it's, it's like what's the point massive does have some things that you is missing like the feedback yeah and the effects but it's like it's i don't know there's a filter drive on all filters yeah. that's true yeah but yeah there's no like robust routing and there's no uh parallel filters which kind of bugs me but, yeah uh and we need more lfos because you can also use them as like multi-step envelopes yeah yeah i noticed that for like cool that's stuff real cool. but yeah i see i can see this being like one of the most popular kind of preset synths around kind of thing oh you're lagging out definitely and what what amazes me the most is am i am i okay now uh i think as you're uploading to dropbox you, your video's no. frozen oh no yeah no i'll stop i'll do that i'll do that later yeah um uh oh i'm sick oh i think you're okay i think the, the quality will uh, come back yeah okay i, I just uploaded so oh, nice. that's new zealand today for you sorry okay that's actually shocking over here. Yeah. Uh, 
what was oh I was saying it's I find it quite amazing that uh, Steve managed to code that like something of that size he must be such a talented dude yeah I'm gonna try to get him on here too but he's really busy with uh, uh, support and uh, bug fixes and stuff like that little tiny things but uh, mm -hmm. he actually had Andrew Simper Semper write the filters. So the filters okay. are made by the guy that made the drop and uh, the glue and stuff like that. So he kind of knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, another guy did the algorithm of the wave warping uh, okay. type of thing. But yeah, I could see this being on uh, freshly squeezed samples as a, you know, preset packs and stuff. Sunset? Yeah, because yeah, you can do already, crazy already stuff. Working on it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. Because you can do crazy stuff. Like I, I recorded my virus hypersaw, and I can. Yeah, I saw that video. Yeah, that was awesome. Like, what other synth can do that? It's so weird. Exactly. Yeah. yeah so that's why I wanted to get it right away. Because some special. Mm -hmm. So what do you see it being used for in uh, your studio, Serum? I mean. Uh, pretty much everything. Like I, I've been using it in productions recently. Um. Uh, I don't know, mostly for basses. Like, I've always had trouble with bass, uh, sound designing bass, but yeah. I find it really easy with this. I don't know why. Um, it just makes sense, though, mm -hmm. like the layout. Um, I'm not using it much for, like, plucks and leads, but I'm sure I'll get there. Yeah. I, I love the detuning and the blend functions like that's never been done before as far as i know yeah the the uh, unison just sounds really good mm -hmm. and i have yeah it's really well made it is and it, like he was telling me that it was a uh, volume compensated uh, unison so it doesn't get all smeary oh. it like yeah it, like oh, awesome. it's like the virus it's like comparable to the virus and that like blew my mind Far out. um yeah there's so much stuff under the hood that people don't know about there is that's makes a huge difference and i want to ask him what he's going to implement that's going to be mm. some fun um what other kind of plugins are you using like day to day uh i just got big kick from kirtland audio so jim kirtland you know used to work with like artists like simon patterson yeah and so on and he made a plugin it's a kick synthesizer it's kind of similar to sonic academy's one um which is quite nice uh, let's see what else. Sugarbytes Egoist. I don't know if you've heard of that. E Egoist, uh, but that's yeah, oh. that's really cool. I haven't heard of it. Um, write that down. It's it's kind of hard to explain. It's like a like a groove box. You chuck a sample and then you can just do crazy shit with it. Yeah, um, that's kind of cool. Though it's having issues with uh, Mac. I'm finding. Mm. <laughs> and other than that, the stand oh, Spire. I'm loving Spire. I reckon that's a decent synth as well. Um, I'm quite minimal when it comes to plugins. Like I don't want to get too uh, drowned by them, I suppose. Yeah. So I got to get that. That Dropbox. What thing. about you? What are you using other than Serum? Other than Serum, uh, I'm really into using my hardware, like my uh, my virus, yeah. my other virus, my Nord, and my uh, JP, which is unplugged right now in, in a corner. But basically, uh, I'm really into using those, just, just hanging out with them. Um, I have my list here. You know, the, the, the usual suspects, like uh, Zebra. I want to do a course on Zebra before the, the new one comes mm -hmm. out. And uh, using a lot of nerve and stuff like that. Just using Bitwig in general, and yeah, nothing, nothing too, nothing too noteworthy right now. That serum is out. Mm, uh, yeah, exactly. I was using Spire for a little while, uh, but it's just too, to me, like it's too, uh, like uh, <coughs> I don't know. I can't. It's like a little bit too much, like high end. It's a little too aggressive. It's uh, like too hard yeah. to tame. Yeah, and I, I get to. What yeah, it's really, I, I, yeah. Anyone compared to say, compared to say, Silent One though, how do you think it stacks up? Because I've heard people saying it's it completely replaces Silent One, like it, 
that kills it in all aspects. Yeah. Um, well, Silent 1 is very, like, primitive, and it's because it came out in 2006, and it still uses mm. the same engine that it's used. Um, right. And, uh, yeah, like, Silent 1, it does have its own kind of sound. It's mm-hmm. kind of like uh, like the the distortion. There's only, like, uh, amount and mix. So, like, you can kind of pick out, it's like, oh, that was me with the Silent, that, like, yeah. like on that bass, it's like... Um, and the filter, the filter, uh, the filter drive has its own character as well that no other synth kind of has, because mm-hmm. it's so kind of primitive. It's like using like an old piece mm-hmm. of gear. It's true. So yeah. it's going to be, it's going to be a novelty really soon, and I think it's yeah. going to be done. But people will still use it as a novelty, kind of like you know the old kind of samples in Nexus or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. It makes it makes complete sense. Yeah, and it's just it's bright and it doesn't really do much. And there's no pulse width modulation. It's really interesting. And it was something. It was something that you couldn't really do back in the day, which was like stack up a bunch of voices and detune them and make like leads and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it's That's true. it's going to be a novelty in my opinion compared to mm-hmm. something. Like, I almost. Yeah. I might get shot down for saying this, but I almost feel like some people perceive it to be a lot better yeah. um, than other synths, like just because of how popular it is. Yeah. But like, it does definitely have a signature sound. Like, there's no debating that. Yeah. Um, and the amount of presets that are available. Yeah, that's that's true. Which is that's which true. is good because you know you know it's like it's for beginners. It's just such a simple synth. Hmm exactly yeah yeah two parts two oscillators two filters yeah i mean i still use it often if i need to sound quickly yeah. you know it takes minutes just to dial or less to dial the sound yeah i still use it too i use it all the time but because yeah. i like you know the digital kind of alias sound yeah that it yeah. makes yeah but that's my sentiment anyway um Big Kick. Was that the Freeware one or is that the one by Rob Papin? No, it's not. The, I saw the Rob Papin one. I'm not too sure about that. He's a good uh, developer, but it looked a bit um, almost like it should have been released five years ago. Yeah. Uh, Big Kick is it's on Plugin Boutique. Um, so... I think it's been advertised in there. Uh, it's quite nice. Big kick. But Let's take a look at how it. it stacks up to Sonic Academy's kick, I don't know. I haven't actually compared the two yet. Yeah. <coughs> I'm more of a just sampled kick. I use Nerve a lot. So am I. So am I. Because you can like bend and like do weird transient things to kicks. Nerve. I've, I haven't played around with that. Yeah. It's... Uh pretty pretty nice it's kind of like a sequencer and that's great like it does that well uh but you can kind of do interesting things you can see this you can like stretch your samples uh repitch bend them uh and you can add a snap take away a snap you can uh change the fundamental you can it kind of does a weird thing where it shapes the fundamental so you can completely remove okay. anything that's not a sign. So you can make your kicks like dark <laughs> and it's really yeah. weird how it works. And then you can uh, control drag and you can drag it to your host and then you're good to go. Oh, awesome. It's more of like a, it's, it's sort of like a resampler <coughs> or not a resampler. Yeah, it's like yeah. a pre-calculated weird effect type of thing. It's really interesting how it works. And uh, yeah, I'd like to see more of that. Cause that's from, uh, that's from X as well, isn't it? Yeah. I'm a big fan. Sure. Just little things that you kind of discover, and like mm-hmm. you can uh, kind of go into the menus and go into the commands and like plot fundamentals to text file and like import them and like do all sorts of weird stuff with math. He's a genius. I want to like yeah, pick his yeah. brain so badly. Oh, definitely, man. Uh, yeah. Any other any any plugins or software? or hardware that you're interested in getting or like really excited about? 
Besides logic. Besides logic. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'd love to get hardware, but it's, it's a tough one because of its price. Like I'm actually, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Like, do you think, do you think it's worth the money from a purely like production standpoint, not novelty standpoint? No, absolutely not. No. Yeah. yeah, see, that's my line of thinking, but I, yeah. it would be nice to have a hardware synth. It is. It's um, it's really a different way of working, but I don't yeah. I don't make music with them. I just play around with them because right, to record okay. it and send MIDI, you got to send a MIDI clock, MIDI data, yeah. and it's out of sync, and it's not as convenient as a plugin. And mm. you know, mm. like I've always I like I love virus synths, and I've always yeah. wanted one. And I got one and I wanted like the full size keyboard and I bought one like on yeah. Craigslist and I'm just like, I have one. Yay. And it's just here. <laughs> and sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll just plug my headphones into it at night and I'll just doodle around and make sounds and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Um, there are a few, uh, kind of, uh, things worth getting a uh, hardware, which would be the virus TI, uh, because it syncs yeah. quite well. It's, it's integrated and it works well. Um, another thing that comes to mind would be the mono, not the mono machine, the Octatrack. No, not the Octatrack. Analog Four. It's called the Analog Four, and it's like a really okay. cool kind of unit that has uh, lots of analogy bits in it. It's made by yeah, yeah, something, something, something. Someone will, someone will tell us. Yeah, but just I'll uh, tell you what I'm looking forward to. Hmm? So, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Um, Fab Filter Pro Q too. I haven't got that yet, but yeah, I mean it just looks amazing from what I've seen. I got the demo. It's uh, pretty cool. I was checking it out. Oh yeah, yeah. Those guys really know what they're doing. Oh, definitely. Yeah, but back to the hardware thing. The only hardware you should consider getting is uh, Virus Ti. Yeah, yeah. Because that has its own sound. It's like the south one of the hardware world. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, it's very robust, and it's like a weird kind of thing that'll just take you years to figure out. Mm. And they're not. Oh, last time I checked, they weren't that expensive. They're twelve like, hundred something. Twelve hundred. Oh, well, it's not too Canadian. Bad. In New Zealand, it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be a lot more. Yeah. Like everything is overpriced here. It's quite unfortunate. Not really. Yeah. What's the uh, the music scene like in Canada? Uh, it's pretty big. Uh, well, we're like North. Well, it's all North America, so we have like the big festivals, the EDCs, three no three hundred thousand people parties, mm -hmm. which scare me. Uh, those are in Vegas, which is like a flight away. I know people that go there. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. The scene's quite big. Uh, there's a big discrepancy, like top down. Because people will flock to go to like these big events. They like big events, uh, big uh, festivals, big name DJs. But then they don't go out to like a club, a club night put on by a couple music guys. Like they won't go to those. Oh. So like the oh, being okay. a DJ is kind of like you know uh, the music scene as like like producers. We have a few. Mm. Uh, in Canada, uh, we have like Lazy Rich. He's from uh, here. Datsik and uh, Excision, I believe, oh, are yeah. four hours away. Um, yeah, there's a few people. Um, but yeah, the scene in, in Canada, it's not. It's big, but it's not big. Right. It's not like, you know, club night, club night, club night. It's like, oh, top 40 nights. And oh, we go to like the raves every couple months. Yeah, kind of that's, that's what it's like over here, pretty much. I see. Um, a question following from that, this isn't production related, but that's all good. I find it so interesting. Like, you know how Deep House and, and Techno and Tech House, they're starting to come back in, um, like, big time. Mm -hmm. Do you think, as a result of that, music will start going back to the clubs instead of the, not instead of the festivals, but, yeah, you know, you think that will happen? I think it comes in cycles. Uh, yeah. So, you know, 
like the summer's over. So like the summer festival music, it's it's gone. And I don't think it's going to come back again next year. Okay. Uh, that big room, the big room stuff. I don't think that's going to come back. No, next I think year. it's. I think it's almost done. So, I'm really interested and excited that, like, what's going to happen next summer? Mm, uh, mm. When people are kind of like into like the clubbing mood, people fly around and vacation. Like, what's going to be? Yeah. Like the new big thing, and if it is uh, deep house and and all that all that fun stuff at least it has a groove and at least it, you know, gets you moving. Mm. It, it doesn't exactly. really work in a massive arena. Like I'd be really surprised if it yeah. works in a massive arena. Yeah. And I don't know what, like where the big room sand will be. Mm. And I don't know what kind of music they're going to play in those big, big festivals. So yeah, it's yeah. really, really interesting. I think uh, that there will be more club nights because in my opinion, like, techno and well not so much techno but like house and like derivatives of that genre they need to be intimate like the dj like mm. small small clubs it's like you can like actually like Definitely. touch the dj guy you know yeah. and you walk yeah. from the booth to get a drink and then you come back it's like that's how intimate yeah. that kind of music is totally but like that's like you know my idea of it but it's going to be really interesting so that's why I'm kind of like taking a step back from music making and I'm just going to be doing videos because the the industry is kind of falling like in it's kind of the bubble has burst and uh, Do you reckon? I think so like the like the big bubble it's, it comes in waves but yeah the whole big room thing it's over because summer is over and it's gonna it's gonna get yeah. cold I, I have a I have a feeling and I might be wrong that it's and I, I sort of hope this happens, that it moves towards a more rhythmic kind of um, sound. Like, I'm not sure if you've heard of, uh, I think it's pronounced Crider. Like, a lot of his tunes, you know, they're, they're very uh, rhythm, I don't know how to say it, they're rhythmic. But I, I wouldn't call it big room, it's more technical than that. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like techno crossed with um, big room house, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but whether that's the next big thing, I don't know. Probably not. Yeah. But it works. It works on those festival type stages. Maybe. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. It will be interesting. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's see here. How long have we been doing this for? Yeah, I have really like shootout questions or something at the end. Sure. Um, let's think of one. So. Uh, What's like the biggest inspiration? It's a broad question, but what's like the biggest inspiration for what you do? Like in terms of artists? Like, they, like I want to be that guy. Like I want to be one of those guys kind of thing. Oh. I want to be like him um, and I'm going to kind of not emulate, but yeah, be inspired. I, from a, yeah, from a production perspective, um, BT is like and i know that's so cliche because everyone idolizes him but bt is just he's next level yeah. um so definitely him and I'm trying to think of some chance guys um i don't know i'll probably stick with bt yeah to be honest, sort of come see. he's a good good choice um but i like for inspiration for music i i do and this is another cliche one like nature is really inspirational yeah inspirational for me if i can't come up with music i'll just like go on wallbase.cc and download a couple of wallpapers and just stare at them for a few minutes and then yeah off i go this is connect connect to nature. exactly yeah uh so social media i wrote that down somewhere and i good thing i wrote it down so uh what are some things that you want to promote? Um, EDM prod, of course. Yep. Uh, freshly squeezed samples. Um, yep. Your uh, SoundCloud. Do you want to do that? Sure. That's yeah. SoundCloud slash Chasm. Chasm. Uh, K H A Z M or Z M. Um, yep. I think that wraps it up. And you're on Twitter as well, uh, Sam. Met yeah, Metla, Sam Metla, Sam Metla. Probably, yes. but 
All right, <laughs> we'll get that in there. Uh, awesome. So, yeah. Uh, thanks for doing this. Uh, no worries, man. Thanks should, for having me on. We should do it again uh, one day soon. Totally. For sure. All right, take care. Sweet as man, see ya.